Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Liverpool Connection podcast. I'm Daz, I've got Steve with me, and we are the Liverpool Connection. And um, I'm very, very happy that uh, we've got a special guest today. Um, we've actually been waiting for him uh, for a while, and I'm glad he's come on. It's uh, Mr. Peter Carney, who, uh, in my book, is the best banner maker ever, ever, hands down. <laughs> Hands down, and he also uh, does soccer in the city tours. So, yeah, hiya, Peter. Yeah. How are you, mate? <laughs> hiya, Taz. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for that. That's uh, it's uh, it's heartwarming to hear someone say that. You know, I, I work hard at banners, um, and and it, it's funny to say about the tour because things seem to have shifted. The tour is. Um, come unstuck because of it's you know it, it's a live uh, interactive you know happening between people um, but during this lockdown I've spent a lot of time on banners and I, I feel like I've proper developed my craft although you know yeah so I, I appreciate you saying that thank you very much uh, you're welcome um, let, let's start from the beginning um, we, we usually ask, you know, uh, why why Liverpool football team? You know, uh, <laughs> obviously, you're from Liverpool, so obviously, you, you can only support two teams, and you know, you yeah. went you went with the red side, which is good. Um, so, yeah. when 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 was your first experience like at Anfield? My first experience at Anfield was preschool. My dad used to take me and put me on his shoulders. Um, I've got two older brothers, and I presume that they had the same experience. Um, my dad worked in a... We, we, we grew up in Kirby, about to, where the training headquarters is going. And it's about five miles from the ground. And my dad collected the glasses in the pub. Last orders was three o'clock. Well, the last round of collecting the glasses, he'd then come out and we'd be waiting outside for him get on the next bus down to Everton Valley and get on another bus up to the ground from there. On a good day, for me, on a good day, we'd get in the ground at the half-time gate, so we'd pay half price to go through the turnstile. On a bad day for me, but good for my dad, we'd run late and miss the half-time gate and go through the exit gates when they were open for people to come out. We used to call it three-quarter time. So we'd go in the uh, we'd go in the exit gate when they were open for people to come out because she didn't pay for that, which was good for me. That's another pint in his pocket. Um, yeah, so that was me. That, that was my first uh, uh, experiences of the match. We used to stand in what I now I've renamed a part of the ground Trent Corner, and that's where um, I mean everyone knows where Trent Corner is without you know me explaining. Um, and that, that's where we'd stand in the, in the corner there and I'd be sat on my dad's shoulders, yeah. Yeah, that's crazy because it reminds me, you know, my granddad used to take me and did the same <laughs> thing. I'd sit on his shoulders and I, yeah. I, I, I tell the story of like, you know, when he needed to, you know, go take a whiz, uh, yeah. he'd put me on somebody else's shoulders until my yeah. granddad got yeah. back. You know, I wouldn't yeah. even know who they were. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but you know yeah, that's that's yeah. the that's the fans yeah. back then. You know they help each other. Well, that, that, that was the way of it. Yeah, my granddad um, and my dad. At one time, there was um, there was three generations of the family and two branches of the last generation who were Saint John ambulance men at the match. Uh, and my dad went through spells of going the match as a Saint John ambulance man. My granddad done it for donkeys years. He, he ended up he was in the Saint John ambulance brigade. For uh, 40 years, and for those that don't know, the St. John Ambulance Brigade is the paramedic service at the ground, which was done on a voluntary basis and still is now. They still have them uh, in the ground. But he's done it for 40 years and, and ended up being awarded a, like the Brother of St. John Award, you know, with a cloak on and all that, like, you know what I mean? But yeah, so even before my dad, you know, my granddad was going to, to the match, yeah. So, um, Go ahead. Oh, I thought uh, Steve. I thought you were going to jump in. Um, oh, I could. Ju I could jump in whenever you want me to. <laughs> jump, jump in and jump out. Um, so, Peter, what what does uh, Liverpool Football Club mean to you? Everything. Just, you know. Well, you, you know, the, the, like you know, the, 
the um, my, my my calendar, my clock, my everything revolves around it. Everything is set by it. You know, we make no plans. And funnily enough, Tina's uh, booked me. I'm going on the Royal Liver Build just to make a liar out of myself. I'm going on the Royal Liver Build and tour next week at um, half past four, Charity Shield Day. Tina booked it by mistake, so that's the time the game's kicking off. I'm just going to go along with it. You know, Charity Shield is, uh, you know, and, and I wanted to take my bus down to Kingsbury. We go to Kingsbury for Wembley. But, yeah, it just means everything. You know, everything is set around that. When the television times change, um, excuse me, then our, we set our schedule for the away matches for the bus. And, and then, you know, that'll be the end of the season. That's all within four weeks of of the game happening um, and so everything is set around that you know um, like Boxing Day was in use this year um, we were away at Leicester um, so you know our, our Boxing Day was set around you know going to Leicester for the game which was a, a, a cracker like yeah but it, 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 it does it means everything I, I can't imagine you know uh, it not being part of my life and, and it, I find it really hard um, this, you know, not being, and, and I'm the best. I've been in the ground a dozen times since lockdown. No, half a dozen times since lockdown, um, which is half a dozen more than 99.99999% of people who, who, who go the match every week. You know, um, but I, you know, it, it just leaves me uneasy. Yeah, but it, it, you know, it means everything. It's part of my life. It, it, it's got to be weird, though, you know, being at Anfield and like, you know, again, no atmosphere, you know. So. Well, it's not a match day. A match day is special anyway. You go in that ground at any time during match day and it's special. There's a tingle. Um, I've been in that ground hours before kickoff um, on a match day and there's a tingle about it. There's, you know, it's special. I say, you know, one of the things I say on my tour is... Um, I don't go to watch a football match. I go to participate in an event. And and I do, you know, I, I genuinely feel that I play a part in the shouting and screaming at the players. And, and from there, you know, to... Uh, and hopefully it's all positive. I, I know it's all positive. I don't say anything negative out loud. Uh, certainly not in the ground to Liverpool supporters. But when you go in the ground on other days, it's special. And this year, I had a... Um, a really special experience about it with the Hillsborough Memorial Banner because the lockdown had come up a couple of weeks before the plans I had for the uh, for the banners to do with the service being in the ground um, had to change and, and you literally had to take it as it can come, you know, what's going to happen. Anyway, the week before I asked the club to um, to because I put the Hillsborough Memorial banner in the ground uh, and, uh, and they, they said, yeah, where do you want to put it? And, and I told them I wanted it in the space between the steps of the cop and the skies of this earth. And that's where it went. And, that, and you know, to see that, honestly, it was the first of half a dozen meltdowns about since lockdown. And, and I literally, I just crumbled I mean, legs went, my stomach went, and so that was that was something else to behold. Um, and then the invitation to take the banners in and decorate the cop. Um, we went in three days running um, in the week before. I think the game was on a Wednesday, and we went in like ten days before, and I went in three days running. I was literally on my back under the cover of the, that's on the seats. I was on my back, someone was passing a thread through the, the cover to, and I was threading it and then passing it back through, and I was crawling along the rows of seats under the cover at one point. Um, that was really hard work, but, you know, to, to look at it, to see it, mm -hmm. what it is. Yeah, know, it, look, it looks amazing. You know, yeah. with 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 no fans in the stadium, though, I, I really do think that you know that the doing it in the cop was very significant. 
you know. Yeah, they yeah. Come and, and they put themselves out for that. Uh, all credit to Liverpool Football Club because they put themselves out and they said to the authorities, the Premier League and what have you, they, they, you know, they, you're not putting anything on the car. And as it turns out, we had some, you know, to and fro about how we were doing things and and uh, getting banners in for the last game and stuff. Um, and and they were they, they weren't very forthcoming about uh, what we could do and what have you. And and it turns out, of course, they had the podium on the, the thing which they couldn't reveal and what have you, you know. And and that's part of the tension that you have with working with the club because it's a working environment. They've got this uh, whole loads of um, biosecurity measures anyway. Um, we actually spent three weeks uh, designing a system whereby we could display the flags on the cop so that they were at right angles, so that they were facing the cop, not lay on the thing. When we went in the grounds, the discussion only lasted five minutes. They said, no, they're going on there and there's nothing else coming in. But I, I, me and two fellas, it's a patented flag system that we've adapted, and I've adapted it again for when they go in with spaces between people. I've actually got a flag system ready to go so that flags can be shown face on to, to the um, thing, but it depends on the distance with seats and stuff like that. Um, so, we do, you know, you just have to adapt, but all credit to the club because, I, I, you know, that's the best way of doing it. It's the best representation of fans without seeing a fan. You know, um, and I, I don't um, yeah, so you know, all credit to them, and it's a case of working with them to, to do that. There's a new thing coming about fireproof uh, banners and stuff like that. Of course, they had to have that right because of the fireworks, mm-hmm. and, and it created recent real problems. In fact, I'm just looking at a banner now that should have been in there, um, and wasn't on it, you know, I'm just working on it now, and it'll be in for the first game, first game back, yeah. Yeah, um, we, we had Mark McVeigh on from the Owen McVeigh Foundation. Oh, Ma- yeah, Mark yeah, Marcus yeah. Sounds. Um, yeah. On, on the club, you know, he didn't even know they were going to do that, uh, yeah. for, you know, for, yeah. for Owen. Um, yeah. And that, that's Liverpool Football Club through and through. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know what? I, I, I can honestly say, like, I've never been so close to Liverpool Football Club as I am. I, I, you know, I, I always consider myself to be an outsider in when it comes to be the club. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I have my run-ins with them and that. Like, you know, and the, the, the tour is one of them and it still burns at my head the way he carries on over that. But um, I've never been so close. I've never felt so much a part of, of Liverpool Football Club um, as I do. And I actually got... Um, I got asked to do a, like a TikTok film for Capital to do a thing in October um, and a new campaign. And I've got to do this TikTok thing where you get thrown a bar of chocolate and then throw it onto someone else. And it's with Firmino and Fabinho. So I had to get the banner out of the ground, the Brazilian Brilliance banner out of the ground to put on the washing line in the back. Um, I mean, who can refuse to make a film with your favourite footballers? You, you, you know, whether they, you know, <laughs> you know. So uh, yeah, I mean, you know, and that, that, that that's an honour, isn't it? It's literally an honour. It was the, the email from the club who said the first person I thought of was you. Fabinho, Fabinho, you know, definitely <laughs> having some of that. Did, yeah. did you have to keep a bar of chocolate? <laughs> you, they're well gone. The flake is still in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we got we got a few bars of chocolate, about half a dozen, and me, Tina, and Tom Dunner in the back, which is really good because you know we had a laugh. Like it's one of the highlights of the summer. And um, Tina's throwing the ball, and Tom's doing the filming. You know, so we we had a good laugh about it. Like there was about honestly about fifty takes. You want about five shots, and there was about fifty takes. I just set them all. You know, on WhatsApp, and you can you know work through it like. Um, and the other thing that, that, that has happened recently and that has been really significant for me is the window for Nike. I've done the banners for, for Nike for the uh, kit launch in Liverpool 1. And that, you know, three banners uh, says Campione Liverpool, and down the middle is a, a stripe of stars. Um, representing the league trophies and the uh, European trophies. It's like a Christmas banner. Honestly, it's just a load of stars down there. And that was, you know, that's a, um, that, you know, it, it's a commercial job 
um, I mean, I put the commercial time into it, like. Uh, but to be asked to do that, when when I when I come to do it, they have a thing called a deck, and it's a book about twenty five A four pages, and it's how these people are going to dress the shop, um, on each you know each page. Everything is measured by the millimeter. Now, I usually argue about whether to do it in centimeters or inches. You know what I mean? That that's as accurate as I get. But everything on this thing was was about millimeters. Down. And anyway, I went in ten o'clock. I went went down there, and um, when I got back to my car, it was five. The five o'clock news in the morning was, was coming on, and I watched them dress this shop with the new kit and all the little scarves and little figures and, and, and what have you in this what they call the engage area when they said it's the engage area i thought they meant where you go and try the shoes on <laughs> but it's meant to be like you know a feel good factor dressing it like somebody's dressing room somebody's bedroom or you know or your man cave or it's a bit like that yeah, and I watched them doing that. I was dead interesting like you know and then when we come down to do the window I insisted on being there to see it because it's you know it's the ultimate accolade to you know to make banners for, for a commercial company like Nike you know anyway while I'm hovering around watching this fella putting these stripes on the window i found this 25 page book and i'm looking at it and it's telling you where everything goes and how it should be set out and, that. and the first page of it was about me it was about my banners being in the window um, and attracting people to, to and i went oh my god and then inside that is a picture of my banners they asked me for sketches when I, when they first asked me <laughs> They asked me for sketches. I don't do sketches, you know what I mean? And I don't, you know, I'll, I'll do a basic draw, literally with a pencil. I've got that way where I'm doing it more and more, you know. And I said, well, yeah, and, and I literally got these where these ones were long, and, and I've got the word Campione. I wanted to write Campione, 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 Liverpool. Right? So there was going to be four banners. And, um, and I've literally got hand-drawn stars on this thing, and it's got the measurements of, of each star, say 25 centimetres, and then the gap two centimetres, and then I've gone 25 multiplied by eight, or seven multiplied by two. You know what I mean? And that was my sketch. And I, and I said, look, I haven't got a sketch. And I sent her a picture over to this. She said, oh, oh, all right. Well, when the brief changed, he then sent me uh, another thing. He said, oh, well, that's not what we want. Now, what we want is this. I'd already had clock made up because the time was pushing. You know what I mean? I actually had the clock made up. I said, oh, you know, that's a waste of time. We're going to have to break that up again now. So um, when they changed the brief, I, um, I, I said, right, I'll, I'll do this properly. And I literally, uh, you know, done a scale drawer and I'd had a meltdown over the bus. I took, put the bus into the, um, to the IV code, the people who, you know, make the bus. And they come back with three parts, would cost me three grand. Um, and I just said, oh, fuck, you know, I thought my bus was finished, wiped out, you know what I mean? Uh, I thought, right, I've got to get on with something. So I got on with this job for the, the banners, doing the sketch for them. And, and I had the scale all wrong. I had it right on the horizontal and wrong on the ground. It, you know, anyway, I spent the time. And I'd done it together. But I'd done it in such a way, like, uh, that I just highlighted a little bit of it to show the colours, you know, around the letters and what have you. And I sent it off to him. And when I come to go in the shop and I'm looking at this deck, there's a picture of these three banners, a mock, a virtual picture of these three banners in the window with mannequins, placements organised, these two pictures in and all that. And my banners were taken, the picture of my banners in this, were taken from the mock that I'd made. I understood then why she wanted the sketch in the first place. You know what I mean? I thought I was just being nice and proven, you know, I knew what I was doing, you know what I mean? Because the placement of the stars, if you look, you know, we've got 18 league championships and six uh, thingy, uh, European Cups, and one star for the World Club Cup. So I had six groups of three between seven stars, but one of them had to have four stars in. And on the sketch, the four stars were below the World Club Cup one, whereas on the actual banner, they're on the bottom. So it's out of the way, it doesn't look out of sync, you know what I mean? And that's how I, you know, worked it out like so. Yeah, I mean, you know, I put a lot of time into it, and it was so precise. 
Um, I had to get the, I had cloth made up for the banners in the first place. I had to change them. And then when I come to do them, I could see that they were out. And I, the woman who does me sewing, she had to do an extra day's work on the Saturday to get it spot on. But when the banners come to go up in the thingy, sure enough, half a centimetre was hanging over on one of the banners. And the woman in charge said, oh, I'm going to have to sort that out. I'm going to have to sort that out as well. Because where I put drawing pins in the top of the Liverpool banner, between the drawing pins, it had risen by half a centimetre. And we didn't. We had to scrounge the drawing pins out of the office of the shop. <laughs> so, yeah, so there's a little uh, run through of what, you know, how you come to make banners. Yeah. You're not stealing your, your wife's curtains, are you? No, no, no. I once had a set of curtains from a bingo hall in Kirby um, <laughs> that, that we never used. You know what I'd done when I first locked down? One of the things I'd done was uh, I made a bed sheet banner and it's actually on the cop now. I don't know whether you've seen the tribute to the steward who died, Paul, Paul, I think it was Paul Kelly, was it? Um, forgive me if I've got a surname wrong. Uh, and they asked us to do um, to do some banners on the cop, on the fence of the cop because uh, they were going round the ground before they went to the camp and so we took some of our banners from the match like we had to get in the ground to get the uh, the cop ice banner they particularly wanted that because it was a favorite of his and what we done was we dressed the fence with the banners and the gate at flagpole corner had made a flag for the fella and it had on the flag liverpool ynwa and six stars but it was too small, so I had to make a bigger one. So the one that was left, uh, we put black stripes on it from, you know, for the morning of this fella. And we put that under the flag, Liverpool champions with all these stars. It's written in the stars. That's the idea. And this big one I was talking about, I'm sitting here looking at, that's the same thing. In between the stars, it's going to have Liverpool champions because it's written in the stars. Um, with all the dates on each star. So this bed sheet banner that I made, I was just going back to basics and trying to keep myself busy, you know. And uh, so literally went and bought a bed sheet, cost me a five or something, and, and made this banner. I made the letters up myself and uh, and what else. And I was made up with it, but I had the dates on it, you know, and it proper looks, um, it looks old because it's like an off-white, you know what I mean? And because I put the red straight on it, it's not like the red in your painting behind you or the red of that banner there. It's like a, um, it's heading towards maroon sort of red, you know what I mean? And it, it proper, it looks, what do you say, retro without being retro, you know what I mean? So each uh, star has got a date in. Well, at that time, we didn't know whether they were going back into play. So the last star on the right-hand side has got a space in it and it's still got a space in it because that banner is in the cop. Yeah, but it was great. Yeah, and you know, with that exercise, you know, I've done this thing for the BBC, and there's a program coming out on the BBC in October called Craftivism. Um, and, and it's about what they call the, the, the gentle art of protest. So, people who have particular skills, you know, you might be a potter and you, uh, you make pottery with the CNG symbol on, or, you know, that type of thing. Um, and it, 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 on your side of the pond, look out for a, a project called uh, Little Tiny Pricks Project. And it's people who are making little embroidered um, things. Uh, tiny, having a ticket. Tiny, tiny Pricks. Tiny, tiny Pricks Project. Oh, Tiny Pricks? Yeah. yeah <laughs> that, in, with a needle. Yeah, well, that, that's Daza's nickname on the soccer field, so. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> <laughs> Cheeky bugger. Different concept. Yeah. <laughs> so the, it's this idea, this thing that they're doing on the BBC is, is this similar idea. I've just come across this tiny pricks thing um, online. And the idea is that people uh, use their skills to uh, make protest or what have you. And they're picking up on my Hillsborough banners. And I said, to them, Look, you know, my Hillsborough banners were not made as a protest, they were made as a memorial, they were made as a comfort. Uh, the, you know, what have you, but they come to symbolise protest um, and what have you, because they were so often seen um, uh, 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 round and about, you know. But when I done the programme, um, I wanted to do something in front of them, you know, um, that, that, that was to show the craft of it. So, um, so with it being on the BBC, I thought I've got to do a blue banner because it'll be a blue Peter banner. 
you know, is one I made earlier. And I use a lot of sanity, but as they say on Blue Peter, this means nothing to you, but I think Daz will get on what I'm talking about. Um, and the Blue Peter uh, kids program, you should always make something every week. And when they used sellotape, they talked about sticky back plastic. So they wouldn't use the word sellotape because it was a trade name. Every time they use sellotape, you say, oh, let me put some sticky back plastic. And I always say to people, you know, I, I'm not a skilled man, but I'm a master of sellotape <laughs> because I use sellotape a lot in the, in the thing. So that's worth watching out for as well. Hey, Peter, I wanted to, I wanted to ask you, you know, uh, thank you, first of all, for coming on to the show. I mean, you're, for me personally, after Betsy Ross, who was the maker of the first United States flag, you're the second best banner maker of all time. Right. So I wanted to add, add so the, um, well, you, you might know, be also in a new area, you know, because I'm yeah, this, week, I, I, this week I, I'm going to speak to people <laughs> about changing my website because yeah. I've added in the pipeline for about nine months to change the website um, to better reflect the tour. If you yeah. look at my website, it's absolutely garbage. No, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure that we get the word out about the tour, but I wanted to go back to, because yeah. it's funny because, you know, I've, I've been to Anfield uh, a few times and the first couple of times I did not sit in the cop, but you know, I think everybody wants to go to the cop, but I think the advantage of not being in the cop is that you get to see the banners and the flags flying because when you're in the cop, you don't really get to have that viewpoint, right? So it's been, it's, it, to be able to just sit there on a European night and look at the cop end and seeing the banners and flags flying around, it's excellent. And so on behalf of everybody that's a Liverpool fan worldwide, when they have to, <laughs> when they can't get to Anfield, but they see the flags and banners. I mean, we yeah. appreciate all the work that Thank you put you. through. And it's, it, I mean, there's a reason why people want to go uh, to Anfield to play a game. There's a reason why people want to go and be part of this team. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's just, you know, I commend you and and uh, respect all the work that you've done. But tell us really how you you started doing this. I mean, you've you've told us a lot of um, current events that you've done. Mm -hmm. um, tell us how this really started. That you decided, hey, I'm going to be this banner maker. I'm going to start putting things in the in the cup. <laughs> The first banner I, I made um, I, was the day Liverpool played Leicester in the FA Cup semi-final 1974. Mm -hmm. And on the Saturday, I'd been at Old Trafford for the first game. They drew nil-nil. And Reds Rum won the National that day, mm -hmm. the second time in three. And, excuse me, we... Uh, we were listening to the match on the radio, so of course we had to borrow the radio. So we borrowed the radio, our radio, um, and we parked ourselves out the back of, of, of our house, me and a couple of friends. I know uh, Stephen Smith was there, he was one friend, but I can't do, I think there was other people there, but I couldn't put any other names to it. And it was just a case of keeping ourselves busy while, you know, while we were waiting for the match to come on, and, mm -hmm. and then when we were listening to the match, and, um, and I, I made it literally with a ruler and pencil and brick paint, uh, a bed sheet, and that's what I was saying to you before, go back to basics. Mm -hmm. I made the letter look myself, the shape and size of the letter and myself, and that's exactly what I've done earlier on this year. Uh, I worked out a letter and system on an A4 page, etc., etc. but back then uh, I only wanted three letters, LFC, and of course LFC is easily um, uh, squared up. Mm -hmm. So that's what I've done, and, and you know, and it worked on, uh, on, on the banner. And I was a bit of a nuisance as a, as a graffiti artist. My nickname as a kid was Wacker. <laughs> and um, when um, uh, they had a row of, uh, ha a row of flats, uh, six block, six flats in a block, so you go in the main door, and then there was a flat either side, and then on the first floor, there's a flat either side, and then up to the second flat either side and they emptied these, these flats when I was a kid and uh, so of course you know being kids like you're messing around they used to call them I don't know where you're from Daz but um, down in town in, 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 the, in the city centre they call them bonzies you know they're derelict flats and, and you'd spend days on end you know one day after another you make a den in the bondy 
you know, and this is what we were doing, you know, uh, making tens in these uh, empty flats. And when we got into the roof one day, they were building a motorway at the other, facing these flats, they were building a motorway that was running across the, the view of these flats at the other end of the field, between our, the field that we grew up playing football on. At the end of that field, 150 yards from our house, was a golf course. Well, on the edge of the golf course, they built this motorway. So we get into the loft of the um, of the uh, empty flats, and I took the slate out of the roof so that it read WAH. <laughs> he goes into school the next week, and uh, one of the PE teachers gives a sermon about um, about driving into um, into work this day and looking to his left and seeing this roof with the word "wah." <laughs> if only people would put their good talents to good use. Well, you know, fifty five years later, and that, that's what I'm still doing. <laughs> did Did you have um, when you made that first banner? Was there any um, pushback for you bringing it into the into the stadium and 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 presenting it? Or? The only time I can remember taking that banner to a match was the 1974 FA Cup final. And my ticket was for the lower section of the Liverpool part of Wembley Stadium. It, but I couldn't see. I didn't have a, I didn't have a pole for it or nothing like that. And, and everywhere I went, you remember, I was, I was 15. The game was on May the 4th. I was 15 on May the 1st. Uh, and I'm, I'm not the biggest guy in the street anyway uh, and I really struggled to see I was on my own my brother had gone to London with me um, but he didn't have a ticket he'd stayed in the car park um, and, and I couldn't get a, I couldn't get a good view and I ended up literally on the wall at the back of the stadium lay on this banner on my stomach watching the thing I don't remember an issue about about taking the, the banner uh, in um, and I literally lay on this flag watching the, the game and it was like watching, you know, when you get them views, I mean, I don't know if you've been at the back of the Anfield Road, mm -hmm. but you're the, you know, the, you're looking at the game and you've got that, the, the roof in your eye line, you mm -hmm. know, it, right. it's a bit like that. Well, I had that and also the clouds in my eye line as well, like, you know, I could just make out the pitch and when the roof comes down and, and I was laying on, on, on this flag. Yeah, a couple of years later, we went to Wolverhampton and we had a Union Jack, which, I, I mean, I, it's probably like a fisherman's story. I, I, I remember this Union Jack as being 40 foot long. Um, every time I say it, I think, 40 foot, that's some flag that... Uh, it obviously come off a ship in its history, you know, who else would have a 40 yeah. foot flag? Either that or the flagpole of St. George's or... <laughs> and I, I couldn't even tell you where, where we got it from. It had Liverpool written across the middle of this Union Jack. And when we went to Wolverhampton for the, uh, the title decided in 1976, of course, there was that many turns up. The gates ended up going in. The, the gates literally buckled at the bottom and people crawled under the gates. They never knocked the gates down. The bottom hinge broke. I wasn't there, but I seen it. Um, and and, and the, the two hinges like that, and the bottom broke like that. Well, the, where the lock is here, that's where it was swiveling, you know what I mean? The top hinge was, was, was still on. Um, but we got in round the back by throwing this flag up to people who were already in the ground. There was a, a pathway adjacent to the perimeter wall of the ground. And on the other side of the pathway was a school. So the flag was dropped from the wall of the ground and you had to jump off the wall from the school, grab hold of the flag, and then the two fellas at the top of the wall inside the ground would pull you up with the flag and get you into the ground. <laughs> and that's how we got into the ground when Liverpool won the league in World 76, yeah. I don't remember the stewards asking us if we had a fireproof certificate, to be honest. <laughs> well, I mean, it, you, you've, you've, you know, you started with that one flag, and now it's it's there's multiple flags. How many flags per game or, or banners are you putting out? In the cop end, do, do we put out? We have, yeah. we have half a dozen regulars. Um, yeah, yeah kind of believers. Uh, we are the famous copites. Mm -hmm. We have a couple of German flags. There's a portrait of uh, Jurgen Klopp that was meant to go on. You're going to believe us, but the artist put it on heavy canvas, mm -hmm. and that is meant to be. That is going to be. Um, a banner in its own right. He, he's done another portrait on the back of that canvas. So when we were talking before, you were asking about, you know, saying how much you appreciate seeing the cop mm -hmm. from uh, from outside the ground. Well, you're going to believe us. 
I have different ways of making banners. I have a, a, what I call a two-faced banners or, or double-breasted banners. Mm -hmm. And what they are are uh, banners that have a painting on both sides. Mm -hmm. So you're going to believe is on the back of that. Okay. It's European cups. There's okay. room for 10. So it's got room to grow. <laughs> That's uh, good. <laughs> and uh, the six European cups. And one of the things about that, them double-breasted banners, is that then the people who are in the cup can see it as well. I'm conscious that, you know, that some people are not happy and people complained about the trend corner flag that I made, that they wouldn't be able to see the subs warming up because this flag would be in, in this island. They're just that and soft, you know, they're just, uh, you can't please all the people all the time. And this banner that I'm looking at here, it's what I call a Star Spangled banner. Um, it's written in the stars. This is going to say exactly the same on the front as it does on the back. Yeah. So when you see it from the front of the pitch, from uh, on the cup, you'll see it won't be the same because the, the top row of um, uh, lettering is going to say Liverpool and the bottom row champions on one side and on the other side, it's going to have champions on the top and <coughs> Liverpool on the bottom. So what I'll do is that each week we'll alternate which one is going. That's going to replace you again, I believe, when we go back in. Mm -hmm. And what I'm going to do, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, show one side to the ground one week and then the other side to the ground the other week. And hopefully people will pick up on the fact that it's a double sided banner, you know, and, and technically it's really hard work. I never realised the, 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 the difficulty that is. If you look at, we are the famous copites, when you look at the uh, cop it's right next to the goal as you look at the goal it would be to the right of the goal it says we are the famous copites mm -hmm. and if you've seen the back of that that's a flipping flag because on the back of that it says we are the men from the Anfield spy and cop mm -hmm. but the way you would see that is by flipping the top over the bottom so that's what I call a flipping flag if you look at um, the Brazilian brilliance Brazilian brilliance is a flag it only has a pocket on one side. It, it's a parody of the Brazilian flag with the yellow diamonds on and the name of the players across the middle rather than the, what is it that they have on the Brazilian flag. That, that's, a, a, that, that's an ordinary flag. Yeah. So, you know, normally each match day we have about half a dozen uh, banners uh, in the grounds. Uh, things are changing because of this thing about the fireproof and things are changing. Um, like uh, they're, they're going to insist on any banner over two meters by one meter will have to have a fireproof certificate. Um, there's a cost to these things. I've asked them, will they pay for this um, Star Spangled banner to be in when they start playing again in the ground? They haven't answered me yet, um, but I'm hoping that they will. If they don't, then I'm going to have to pay off it. But, you know, as a group, we've got to... We've got to uh, get smart, to be honest with you. Um, our banners are not the mo most seen in the ground because of where we are, mm -hmm. which is the right of the cop. It's awkward for the television cameras because they're on that side. If they take a, a picture of that, the angle that they have, it's not very good. The only way you see them is you see Klopp on the touchline and what have you. Yeah. There's some great views with Klopp on the touchline during lockdown. And in the background, you can see the Shankly banner from the last match of the Standing Cup. And at the bottom of that, it says the cop spirit survives. The top script says all round the ground. Mm -hmm. And the bottom script, the original script, it says the cop spirit survives. The original colouring of that was yellow, but it doesn't work very well against the red. Yeah. So in time, I can't even remember when I'd done it, but in time I changed it to white and you can see it dead stark behind uh, behind Klopp. So, you know, I mean, what we what we try and do is we aim it at, it's aimed at the players. It's, it's meant to, for them to come out and see this colour, to realise, you know, we're, we're putting a bit of time and effort into helping them to play better and, and, and do well, you know what I mean? Yeah. If it gets on the telly and that, then all well and good people feel feel better about yeah. it, you know, when, yeah. uh, whether you're watching on the telly or, you know, you, you, you're doing it in the ground, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, it, it definitely adds a great atmosphere to to us watching the games, you know, from here and just seeing that, the, the banners and all that. But, um, but I want to 
um, kind of transition to your soccer in the city tours. But before we get there, I have a couple questions from some regular listeners. Uh, Julian Lane. Oh, he, yeah. He yeah. wants me to ask you if, if you still had the Bobby Firmino boot. Yeah, yeah, I've got two of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. From the, 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 the um, it's, a, um, it's a relic. It's, yeah. not a, it's, it's not a boot, it's a relic. Yeah. It's a religious relic, yeah. 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 And then, um, and then uh, Blair Barnett, he wants to know, um, let's see, how getting the banners in the cop for the final matches of the season went down did the club ask them or did they go with the club idea? So they're just no, one. No, I asked them. Uh, okay. I made the point when the, um, uh, when the Hillsborough Memorial banner went in there. Um, yeah, I made the point then and then I followed it up with an email and obviously other people had done that. But again, we're, our group is very loose and, you know, um, uh, we're not organised, disciplined, focused. You know, we we just do our thing and the fruit cake and the rest of them are the you know the the the, uh, the cream if you like. Um, and we need to get sharp about it. You know, uh, and 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 I think that we we need to have a formal relationship as a group of people. There's more and more people. You know, to have a banner now, everybody's got a banner. You know, everybody's got their own banner, you know. Um, and I cursed that BBC programme. Um, somebody, they, they asked me, you know, in, in the interview for it, she said, um, so what's, what, you know, what, what's your favourite banner? What's the best banner? And I come up with a diplomatic answer, you know. Oh, eh, there's a banner for everyone, you know. There's all kinds of different styles of banner. But thinking about it later on, I thought, no, the best banner is the banner you make yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's easy to go out. Honestly, I, I, I encourage anyone and everyone to go out and make your own banner. Go through the process of working out how you can space a piece of cloth, how you can make a piece of art. There's a magic about it. There's, there's, there's a creation to it. I used to love the... Um, so the, anyway, the short answer to your thing is there's a, a, a loose um, dialogue with the club. Um, and... I, and I think that it's getting that way that it's going to become formalized now. Yeah. You know, it's funny you're saying, like, make your own banner. When we had the uh, Champions League final against Real Madrid, um, we had probably six or seven. We, we called out and asked our supporters club, make some banners. And we had some great banners made. I mean, Mark Johnson, who we've referenced before, and he made a banner that's 13 foot tall by, I think, 26 foot wide you know, around a water tank and it's, oh. and it was just amazing, you know, when, yeah. and it's uh, yeah. like, when we put well, it up well for, the, done, for the, yeah, yeah, yeah. well, well done. done everybody who made a banner because, yeah. you know, honestly, there's, there's a real magic, there's a real joy about, um, uh, about making a banner and that's what has, you know, been so warm and uh, so useful to me. Is, is that in the first place when the, the, the big shift was when I made the Hillsborough Memorial banner the week after the disaster. Now remember on the Saturday, you know, when I think back about it and I think to myself, you know, I was left for dead on the terrace. I was literally carried out unconscious after going through a near-death experience. And I always describe it as the what happens was the Hillsborough turned me inside out, upside down and back to front. And in that um, thing, in, in the immediate aftermath of that, I made the Hillsborough Memorial Banner, which was a translation of the idea I had to make a banner for the centenary of the cop. And, you know, because, it, it, you know, it, but, it, but to make that there and then, and then the way that that's gone, you know, at that time, that was like a comfort blanket to me. And, and I was like uh, using that to help me, you know, I was like wrapping myself up in it metaphorically um, and promised to show it around the city and stuff like that to keep a name, the names and alive of those who were killed, the names and memory of those who were killed alive. And that was a comfort to me because in a way, I suppose what, what, what I was saying was that, you know, uh, I'm not dead. In fact, I went back for the banner and my logic was I survived, so the banner survives. You know, so in carrying this banner, you know, what I'm saying metaphorically is, you know, I'm not dead, but these people are, you know. 
um, thingy. So all, all power to everyone. There's a great project just being um, released at the Rockefeller Center in New York, um, a flag project looking to encourage people to design flags. And I think they've displayed about 140 of them. And you know what? I say New York is either magic or manic. I think yeah. it's an, I actually think that it's a mix of magic and manic New York. Um, but you know what? I really yearned to walk the, yeah. the, the Rockefeller Centre to yeah. see these flags. If you have a look at it online, and like you say, there the different things that people come up with. And I'm saying to myself, well, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, what we. You know, um, an idea just popped in my head because, uh, you know, we mentioned these banners that we made. What we'll do for our um, Facebook page is have everybody submit their photos of their banners that they've created. Yeah, exactly. And so we can, and, and we'll and forward them to you. And, and, you know, if there's a little, you know, story, I mean, some banners are quite simple. I mean, that yeah. one behind you is brilliant, isn't it? I don't know if it's got a script above Liverpool, but, you know, that does, to me, that does right. You've got the trophy, you know. It, uh, the only thing yeah. wrong with that is that you have an iron in. No, I have it. I just got it. I actually got this straight from Liverpool from uh, John Smith, who I've, I've friended on Facebook. I got yeah. this one. And then our last podcast, I had the championship wall with the yeah. trophies. Yeah. So um, yeah. It's, it's been excellent to, to, to show different things yeah. as a, as a well, background. I, I like that. See, that. When I look at that banner behind you, that's a machine made, you know, yeah, computer yeah, of course, yeah. thing. Of course. There's some belters about, honestly, yeah. did people send them? excuse me, flags and banners for 10 or 20 pounds, yeah. you know, and, and the brilliance, all, yeah. all the trophies sure. are, et cetera, et cetera. Well, one of the things I noticed she went, when I look at that, that that's the club uh, live beards on that. Right, right, yes. Yeah. But they haven't got the regi the trademark registration no, thing no. on it. Right? So, yeah, so, uh, yeah, don't, don't report me to the uh, MPs <laughs> over there, so. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, you know, it's, uh, I wanted to ask you because I know that you and I we we have a common friend in Ken Solomon, and yeah. that you have your uh, soccer tours there in the city. Yeah. So yeah. can you want to uh, like like everybody knows because because when we're able to travel, everybody's going to Liverpool. Yeah. I mean I know yeah. it's it's yeah. rough right now. Yeah. We kind of mentioned it. Well, no, you, you know prior. the way to think of it is now is your chance to save up, isn't it? Yeah, of you course. Know, if you put a couple of, of pounds yeah. a week away and, and and save up now, you know. Uh, you know I got a couple I, of pounds I, right I, here. I love doing the tour <laughs> and, and see him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And one less beer right each time. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, so, what, but what you're I right. Love about it is uh, Ken. Uh, Ken was a great help to me yeah. in the very first place before I even had a bus of my own. He. he uh, he took to me and introduced me to a couple of people mm -hmm. um, that really lifted my confidence. It didn't do any practical use. It was the tourist board. Mm -hmm. And you know what? They just asked me why I haven't renewed my membership. And you know, and when I come to analyse it, I don't get nothing off them. I don't yeah. get nothing off them. Nobody's ever booked through the tourist board um, except the same fellow who sent me the email rang me up early on in a lockdown and he was a great comfort to me. He listened to me, proper counseled me for an hour and a half on the phone. But I can't just give him 300 pounds, but I've had 300 pounds off me for the last five years. Yeah. And, and I can't afford it, you know. Yeah. The bus has cost me a lot of money. But I, I love doing the tour. And, uh, you know, um, the magic to me about it is that that thing about people coming for the first time. And, and every time we do the tour, I uh, I explain about the, the first match I went to on my own. Um, and, and I ask the question, is anybody here for the first time? And, um, and most, well... Every tour, there's somebody who's there for the first time. I've had I've had tours where um, I've had 12 out of 15 people were there for the first time. My hand was raw, um, but everybody who says it's the first time, I walk and shake their hand and say, uh, "Welcome to Liverpool, mate. Be the first of many." Um, and, and I mean that, you know, because there's a magic about that, you know. And for me, if I, you know, I'm I'm, I'm representing the city, you know, I'm representing everybody uh, who. Know. Well, I'm just, you know, and I'm representing myself. And, yeah. and if somebody's there for the first time, when I go abroad, if a local introduces themselves to me, I'm made up. And I, I've always got questions that I want to ask about, um, you know, the local whatever it is, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and that's part of the magic to me is that I'm adding to their first um, 
their first ever uh, time at the game and, and my first time at the game on my own. Uh, you know, it's a magic time, and you know, uh, and, and every time, you know, when I tell a story, um, you know, I, 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 one of the finish line is, uh, you know, it couldn't have been that bad a day because I've been back a thousand times since, you know. <laughs> so, so um, before we continue, tell everybody the name of your company so that when we're able to travel again to Liverpool, we can okay, look for you. The name of your company is Soccer in the City. <laughs> Uh, the website is soccerinthecity.co.uk. It's, I mean, it's it's only worth a visit because then I can add up how many people have been known because <laughs> you know, there's nothing on there. Oh, tell her I know me wristbands are on there. Maybe just give me a minute. <laughs> hey, where'd you go? <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Hi, Daza. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, can you see that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, can nice. You read it? Can you read it? Yeah. Yeah. That's great, though. Yeah, so right, I mean, so the banner that we have, the banner that we have on the front of the car, it needs to go that way, does it? Nice. The, um, yeah, we'll, and we'll make sure to have your uh, your website. So they're available on my website now. I yeah, found yeah, each yeah. by ten. It's the same postage. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we're, we'll make sure to put your link on our website. So yeah, yeah, soccer in the city. But as I say, it, it looks like what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that round to a banner website before the season starts. Um, it's been dormant for a, a little while, even before lockdown. While I worked out how to to do it and what I'm thinking about doing here and now is um, is making the tour happen via Zoom so we're going to make I'm, I'm thinking about it depends on how much work there is to do it but I'm thinking about a way of making some films of my tour uh, sketches of the tour and inviting people on like this you know 10 or 15 people yeah. on and then I, I don't know I mean you know better than me I'm a technophobe so yeah, yeah. I let I let I let me misses like sort all this out, and I just do the talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm simple some, like, I that. like that. Does, I yeah. do. I just do the drinking. Yeah, yeah. And I've got I've got a meeting tomorrow in Homebaked, which you might know. Oh. Um, Send us some yeah. pies. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, oh I yeah. Tell, one, uh, yeah. Yeah. You know that's usually um, one of the main. Mainstays of uh, Ken's trips that uh, we always go to yeah, home baked yeah, yeah. and love yeah. it. I, you know, I, and it's it's funny because you know obviously Daza grew up there and you're from there, and so when I talk to people that are going there for the first time, I'm reliving that trip, right? I'm reliving the moments, and I like, and I get excited again, and I know that they're gonna have a great time, and they're gonna go to home baked and have a pie. Yeah, and I yeah, get all yeah. jealous, and I'm like. Yeah. And I wish, you know, and I told Ken, I was like, I wish I could go every time you have a trip, but I, you know, you just economically, you cannot do that. And, yeah. and, but uh, I enjoy, and, and I think part of the podcast that we try to project out to everyone is that we're living and we're trying to project the atmosphere of Liverpool to everyone else yeah. so that when they do well, get the to go. Home bases, home bases, you know, um, uh, massive anyway I, yeah. i'll be in home bake tomorrow morning and i nice. usually do go in on a monday morning when i, I work um, down the south end of the city and the lad who's done the night uh, shift i take him home to anfield on a monday morning and i usually drop him off and then i go down to home bake but of course when it was under lockdown and that it wasn't so, so regular but they're open again now, and um, yeah. uh, I've been in the last the last couple of weeks. And last week, um, uh, Angela, yeah. the thing, set up a meeting for me with somebody who knows about uh, computers and that. I need to sort this. I need to answer this question about Zoom and file <laughs> transfers. This um, we transfer. Um, I, I can't send file. You know, if I want to send pictures to people, then. Um, I can't do it. I've got like a little film in French and, and I could put it on my website or could send it to somebody to deal with it because it's so big, you know, so we need yeah. to understand this. We send, it to, it. send it to us and we'll help you. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. I wouldn't know how to send it to you. <laughs> 
this one. Shane, do you want to be sending us on a USB stick by snail mail? That's All right. Saying. Yeah. And this is where I need to catch up with. You know, yeah. I've really been caught out in this um, new world. Uh, uh, well, Dazit will give you his FedEx number later, and then you can just send it over, <laughs> and then we'll take care of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, 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 you might want to check YouTube. To, to, yeah. to learn, you can learn tons of stuff on, on, on YouTube. You know what, so. I've done that last week over uh, this project that I'm on, I'm on this banner project, which you'll see in the next couple of weeks. Um, and I was looking for a couple of techniques that I was thinking about, and I ended up on this site, and um, and I got a couple of little films off them, absolutely brilliant. And, and in looking for that, there's a loads of other things that I got. But like I'm one of these people I need to be doing, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, I, I, I'm too active, hyperactive. Um, but I, I, I take your point entirely. I've seen so many different things. I was just trying to think what it was that set me up for it. But uh, there were these things about stitching, um, ways of stitching. Um, there was two films on anyway, I downloaded them. I haven't I haven't watched them uh, properly yet. Um, but there's loads of them, you know. Uh, yeah, and and yeah, the, the, I'm sure there's loads with with YouTube. I need to do like an art program, you know, for, for it's like I, I do a very simple thing, like I said before, I'll sketch something, you know. You want to see the spare room. The spare room used to be full of banners, now it's full of paper rolls, uh, which is the preparation sheets for banners, you know what I mean? Um I'm one short of having a workshop, but I, I think that I could probably get away with uh, a lot of that if I can, you know, learn how to use a, a decent uh, art program. Uh, but I'm one of these, you know, when they say um, you've got Microsoft, um, what's it say, uh, cloud storage. Um, you, you're not signed in for cloud storage, and I say, no, for no one sends it over here, no. You know what I mean? Because and, and you know the, you end up with the emails and all that, don't you? With where the troll and your data and and what have you? You know, and uh, and I'm a bit what you what's the word luddite? You know, I'm a bit um, simple for that that kind of stuff. You know, I'm I'm with you. I'm I'm so far behind on 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 all that stuff. Like I say, you know, if it wasn't for me, misses, I wouldn't know how to to do any of this like podcast stuff. Like yeah. you know, yeah. she she she's like the silent partner. You know, she she gets yeah. all this set up, yeah. and and like I say, you know, she she's brilliant. Um, yeah. I wanted yeah. to ask you, Peter, how, how many banners have you done so so far? I'm I'm well well over a hundred. Um, yeah, well over a hundred. Uh, and, and that's all, all, li all Liverpool, or mostly, mostly. Yeah, um, I've done a couple of family ones. You know, my mum was eighty a couple of years. Well, my mum was eighty-eight, so it was eight years ago. I've done one for her. Um, I've done a wedding one for my sister. Um, I just I done one. Do you know Eddie Braben? He wrote for Morecambe and Wise. He was the best comedy writer in in. Britain in the 1970s, he won the best comedy writer three years on. I made a banner for him. Um, uh, and the, the funny thing is, he, he's been dead a little while, as he, it was for an exhibition. And um, yeah, that, that was, a, it, it was a tribute banner. It wasn't a memorial banner. It wasn't a funeral flag. It was a tribute, you know, this, the, the image of him in the middle of the television screen, it's made out like a television. Um, like an old television, you know, like Corrigan, I use car cords Roy as the frame for the television, like the old televisions. Um, but his picture in the middle of the screen is in black and white, um, and then it's got his awards on and, and what have you on the screens in grey silk uh, padded out, you know, like a screen. Um, that was a cracker. And this one that I'm doing now is brilliant. It's for a, um, a wildflower charity. Um, called Scouse Flower House, uh, and I, I bumped into him in home baked through a mutual friends. We got talking. What do you do? I make banners. What do you do? I'm a wildflower meadow creator. Oh, I said weeds to wildflowers, and the fella sat up. 
his eyes and they popped out of his head. And I thought I'd pinch the copyright idea of him. And, uh, and from there, he said he asked me to make a banner. It never happened. That was a couple of years ago. And early on this year, they asked me again to make this banner. And, uh, and that's what I'm doing now. I've just put past the cloth on to somebody to embroider a piece on it. And that's how I come to learn about this tiny bricks project. Um, but I've just passed the first piece of it. The embroidered piece has to go on first. Um, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what I'm on now, and that's my, my big banner project. The Star Spangled Banner um, is happening at the same time. I'll get some time on that this week. Um, and once the um, the word comes back from the club as to whether or not they're going to pay for the uh, fireproofing, um, depends on, you know, I don't know what the procedure is with that. I think it'll have to go to Cardiff. Um, if, but I need an answer off them by the end of this week, because if they're not going to pay for it, I'm going to have to pay for it, and it's going to have to be sent down there and be back by the 12th of September. Yeah, you um, should, if, if they won't, you should do like a GoFundMe. Yeah, we'll, we've got we'll to do pitch in. Yeah, we've got to do something. Yeah. Um, you know what? Forgive me, but uh, I took a big hit financially with this lockdown. The same with the bus and what have you. Um, so... This is part of the thing where, you know, I've always, like, you know, paid out for it, to be honest with you, um, any of the banners. Um, so, yeah, we, we, we've, we've, got to, we've got to find a new... But it means people are... Well, we'll just see. We've got to make something happen yeah. anyway. Um, hey, Peter, I had, a, I had a question for you. Is that, um, you know, you've been making these banners for all these years... And you've been through the different ownership groups. So, have you? Can you tell? Give us some insight on your relationship with the the various ownership groups. Has it improved since yeah. back in the seventies, or you know, are, well, is this I, current I, I ownership group all, more receptive I, I to what you're doing? All along about FSG, that I think we've got the best of a bad job. And um, there's no such thing as three hundred million pounds worth of clean money. That's what they paid out for the club. Anyone who's got three hundred million pounds, as you know. As, uh, uh, well, well, you have to, you know, you have to make it work, and to make it work, you have to pay people crap wages and stuff like that. That's the way I see the world. Mm -hmm. um, but when you compare that with the um, with the carpet baggers Hicks and Gillette, you, know, <laughs> you realise um, just the, the difference. And and they've proved. I mean, if they haven't proved themselves now, then your view of the world is wonky because. Right. What they, they've been at Anfield now for 10 years. They've done all that they said they were going to do. You know, yes. they, I mean, first of all, they're staying at the ground. And I seriously doubted whether I was ever going to see Liverpool Football Club play in a brand new stadium at Stanley Park, right. um, which is what Gillette and X said they, they were going to do. Right. Um, so I, I think we've got the best of the bad job, but it doesn't sit still. It's not easy going. They've just announced the Champions Wall and inviting people to put pitches on the wall and charging them forty-five pounds for it. That doesn't sit right for me. But it, you know, I'm not everything. You know what I mean? And then I've got forty-five pounds off me to put me pitching on the Champions Wall. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They should be giving me forty-five pounds to put a picture of my banner on the wall. Um, but. That's probably being hard faced, isn't it? Uh, Gillette and Hicks, were, it, it, it was horrendous. I, I, it come to the point where I thought, I'm never going to see Liverpool Football Club play football again. And the only time I thought that that was the case was when I went back into the grounds after Hillsborough and I had a panic attack and I flew out of the uh, crowd just after half time. And I thought, I can't go out this gate now because if I go out now, I'll never come back in again. And I just stood and hovered and waited and thought the only way they'll see them uh, score here is if they get a pen because I was trying to look over people's heads and they got a pen and I jumped up on the wall machine and was going, I said, yes, I'm all right. But for the next match, I changed my spec. But when they said they were moving to Stanley Park and it wasn't Gillette and X that started it, it was John Moores and mm -hmm. uh, Rick Parry that come up with that idea as an old saying right. to go on to speak. Well, you know the song, don't you? Don't want to go to KB or Skemmersdale or speak. Well, I used to sing, don't want to go to KB or Stanley Spark or speak. Just want to stay with all I know and I might have to sit in a seat. <laughs> you know, it's, it, it's interesting you brought that up because 
a lot of people, they're only be, because they, at the end of the day, you know, they were not good owners, Hicks and Gillette, right? Mm -hmm. But they, you, they tend to forget that it was those other guys were really driving to create a new stadium. You know, yeah, and yeah. so it was, people, it was, people forget it. David Moss, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the yeah. Moss family. It, it, um, because what happened was that after Hillsborough, the game went um, so big. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually think that the first ideas of, um, of the new stadium came about after Gerard Houllier uh, and the famous trouble. When I first had the ideas of doing my tour, mm -hmm. um, was around that time as well because you just knew there was going to be loads more visitors you know winning attracts people everyone wants to right. be a winner you know um and, and and i think that that's where the first idea started from it was David Moore. but they literally they they you know they, they couldn't they, they couldn't manage it themselves david moore's i, I think personally he was um, he, he wasn't in a position to um, to raise the funds and what have you that was needed. And of course, in them days, the the the, the grounds was um, was you know so close to the uh, houses on the main stand side. You know, literally the back wall of the houses was the the back wall right. of the car park, and the car park only had room for 20, 30 cars in. You know what I mean? Right. All that idea about, like, you know, um, people turning up on motorbikes or push bikes and putting them into people's backyards and, and things like that. All that was changing. Uh, it was a massive change. The all seater stadium in the 90s, of course, they lost, um, I think it was about, was it four or six thousand places in the cop? when they put the seats in the right, capacity yes. before they put the seats in was either 16 or 18 thousands and it went down to 12 um, you know that's a massive impact of course all the players are demanding a lot more money and and it was going at such a rate of such a rate of knots and you know what dude, I'll, I'll swear it, it, it's ironic that it was 30 years that liverpool uh, since liverpool last won the league uh, because be before now, no one has acknowledged the impact of Hillsborough really on the playing staff and the working staff in the grounds. And and I'll swear, it was like a lead weight in people's pockets. You know, every time they got up off a seat, they yeah. didn't have to go out there and do this. You know what I mean? It was like, uh, what's it, you know what I mean? Julia yeah. really, was the big difference to that. When Julio came, he, he was one short of walking around and grabbing people by the neck and rattling them and getting a grip here. Um, and I know he's done it to Paul Inch, which I'm always thankful for. Um, but he, he, you know, he knew Liverpool. I knew a family who Gerard Julio had stayed with as a trainee um, teacher. Um, so I knew he had genuine insight and, uh, and affinity uh, with Liverpool. It was made up to see. Him. Of course, his football credentials were fantastic uh, because of his coaching abilities. Except it, it, there was a stain, I think, about him being um, France manager when and he played Israel or something and Cantona fucked up or something like that. Um, yeah, but the, 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 that was uh, that was a big change. But you're quite right, you know the. the uh, the the impetus to take Liverpool Football Club uh, forward uh, into a new stadium came from David Moore, but he didn't have the money to back up his ideas, and thankfully he didn't have the money to back up his ideas. I don't know. I, I don't know whether I would ever have gone into a new stadium. Yeah, I mean, what, I mean, we're we're all fortunate that that didn't happen. That FSG came in, put their mm -hmm. put the money into it, and decided to expand Anfield versus, you know, going to a new stadium. Uh, so my, my last question to you is obviously you're, you're from the Kirby area and you, you know, you grew up there and your family's from there. Tell us about the, um, the new training facility. I, I I've been privileged. I've been able to play there tw two times and, and obviously they're expanding it now and bringing the Academy over there. And unfortunately they're not bringing the women's team over there right now, but tell us what the, what you're you're yeah, seeing I, from your perspective? Uh, my I, my uh, playing career finished uh, uh, around the time of Hillsborough, and I actually played my last um, game at the academy. Mm -hmm. um, it was a public park then, though. Right. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> yeah, Sunday league game. It's fabulous. You know, uh, I haven't seen the new facilities, but the the facilities that they're tagging on to is fantastic. Mm-hmm. My wife works around the corner from there, um, and they've had to change their route for getting in and out of thing. You know, it's absolutely fabulous. It's moving forward, but it's moving forward in the right way. Right. Um, the, the big question mark really is about what becomes of Melwood where the first team have been. And remember, they spent a lot of money to Melwood up when um, right. mm-hmm. when Klopp came. They spent a few million pounds on that. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a question mark about uh, what will become of that area in terms of housing and how many kids are going to be in the area. There's the school places about uh, uh, and, uh, and stuff like that. But in terms of the football club, you know, did it's... Like I used to say, uh, Liverpool's not a club anymore, it's a corporation. Well, it's not. It's not a corporation at all. A corporation is Ford or Pirelli or, you know, that's, that's a corporation. Liverpool is a global entertainment brand. That's what it is. It's a big global entertainment brand. At the moment, it's probably one of the biggest in the world, I think. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Um and that's what, what is happening. What you're seeing is Liverpool shuffling itself into a position whereby um, uh, the conditions of people who are working for for this uh, global entertainment brand at the forefront of it. The uh, My mate works in the music industry and he calls it the talent. You know, uh, all power to the talent, he says. You know, um, what they want to do is shift units. You know, mm-hmm. but units will be, you know, a record, but units may also be a T-shirt. Or in the case of football, units will be people who go on the tour. But you can guarantee before long, when that facility is open, that there will be a tour of the training facility. You know, and they will bring money in from that. People want to, you know. Um, and it's fabulous because, you know, ultimately... Liverpool Football Club today, for the last day, in the next couple of hours, will cease to be, you know, champions of everything. Um, but, you know, the, the thing is, it goes back to that thing what Shankly said, you know, I want to build a bastion of invincibility where they have to send a team from Mars to come and play us. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Well, that's where Liverpool Football Club are. And the only way you'll get a team that will beat Liverpool, to be honest with you, is by sending a team from Mars because they are absolutely fabulous. This football team that they're putting out now, it, it, it is the greatest team that Liverpool's ever had. And it is the greatest team on this earth at this moment in time. Mm-hmm. So, you know, enjoy it and build the facilities that, that keep it that way. You know, I always say to people, Liverpool is one of the top five football clubs in the world. And... Even if Bayern Munich win tonight, they will actually equal Liverpool's six European trophies, won't they? Um, and, you know, people say, how do you work that out? I remember having an argument with a fella in home base. This, um, I'm trying to think of his name, I see him in my mind's eye. This um, large, he's our Blackburn supporter, he is. You probably know him as if you've seen him, wears glasses and he's into fashion and all this and that. And he brought him in as a mediator between uh, the club and home base because uh, there was a friction and local housing association brought them in. And uh, this fella said to him, we, he said, oh, Liverpool's one of the top five, top ten football clubs in the world. I said, top five. And he said, oh, no, Liverpool's one of the top ten football clubs. And I said, top five. And he looks at me like that. I said, top five goes by what you've won, not how much money you've got. Right. I don't know what to do with himself then, you know what I mean? Um, but it's true, isn't it? You know, it's, it, it, it's easy to lose sight of the fact that it's a sport, it's a challenge, you know what I mean? It's a, what, what skill do you have? against my skill, you know, and it's, you know, it's, it's about the team. And for me, what Jürgen Klopp has brought to the game is an element of the game that we all either, on one extreme, take for granted, and on the other extreme, don't realise what it is. Mm-hmm. And it's that magic of understanding your spatial awareness and the spatial awareness of the fella next to you who you're playing with, you know what I mean? It's that connection between you. When he says, oh, yeah, you have an overlapping fullback, you know what I mean? If you've got your back to him, how do you know that he's going down there? 
Well, they, nowadays, they go through all that and they say, you know what, you need to, you're the fullback today, you need to be going alongside, and go outside him. And because you're playing in front of him, you need to play two yards inside the touchline. Well, they go through all this, don't they? You know what I mean? And Klopp has got a fantastic way. The, the, the whole key to what he's doing is that he's got this way of helping players understand. Henderson said it, hasn't he? That you know, uh, until Jurgen Klopp, I didn't realise what it meant how I could improve my game without being a better player myself. What he was saying was Klopp taught and what it means to play in the team rather than your own contribution. You know, and, and, and things like that. And similarly, FSG. I've brought something to the game, the industry as a thing, because they haven't got big money to spend as they go. They're spending their own money. They spent their own money to buy the club and they lent it off themselves. If you'd like, they've dipped into their own savings. That's the best way I can think. They've dipped into their own savings. But everything that FSG have earned out of Liverpool in the terms of the value of the club now, if they were to sell up what they were drake in, is absolutely massive. But they've earned it. Yep. Because they've spent the, the, not their own money in what they put into the club, but they borrowed from their own savings account, if you like. That's the way I think of it. And that's absolutely Ted's right. That's not a sugar daddy like Abramovich or the other cow. Uh, we, we, we have that argument all the time in our group about FSG and they're just in it for the money. I'm like, if you have a business, you're, you're, you want to increase the value of your business. Um, and so you wouldn't complain about somebody else having a, having like a tire business and they bought it for 5,000 and then, you know, 10 years later, they sell it for 50,000. You wouldn't, you wouldn't do that. They've, they've, uh, and, and I'm a big proponent of FSG and Daza knows this, that I, I, I defend them probably too much, but because they did put their own money in at the very beginning, you know, we're 24 hours until we're going to be liquid, you know, going to administration. They didn't take any money um, from the public sector there in Liverpool for anything that they've done, even for the stadium. And so for me, they get a, they get a pass. And also that they've, they've delivered, you know, we won the, we won the uh, Champions League. We won the Premier League in the, you know, in a and lot of people. That's a work for it. That's yeah, the thing. Yeah. That's a work for it. That money has had to work. The money that they put in. And, you know, Liverpool was lagging so far behind. It's like um, um, what I say, um, if you're buying property, uh, you buy the worst house on the best street and yeah. you add value to it. And the whole problem that they have, when you talk about how they've managed the thing, it, 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 they've always got this problem where they're trying to add value mm -hmm. so when they put the new stands up they thought they were uh, adding value so that they could charge top dollar well that come back on them because our, right. you know the season ticket all this mm -hmm. 77 pounds for the city no, on that aren't you? you know that's a day's wage for people yeah. you know what i mean it, it, it's just uh, with the uh, with the anfield roads and uh, the idea is to build that but to include um what they call value added seats. So people who pay for the seat and buy the dinner as well. But of course, when you buy the dinner off them, you're paying, you know, twice what the cost price is. Yeah. So did they make that little bit more? Brian and Zanzi make that, that sound. If you go to races, you know what I mean? If you just want to watch the races, then you pay one price. If you want to watch the races and have your dinner, then, you know, you, you pay over the odds for the dinner, don't you? You know, uh, that's fine and Zanzi. But where they come unstuck was, that. So everything that they, they've done, they've always been trying to, um, uh, what you say, you know, like increase the value of it, monetize it, they call it, don't they? You know, and, that, you know, there's no shame in that, you know what I mean? When, as a business, Liverpool Football Club was in a terrible, terrible state when they, they come in and, and, and bought it. And they've literally took it off the floor and got it standing proud and back up to the best that, 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 that it's ever been. And who can argue that Liverpool Football Club is one of the top five football clubs in the world here? Now look at the state of Barcelona. They're in a mess. And I don't just mean on the pitch, they're in a mess behind the scenes as well. They're on the grid, they're in the same boat. No, uh, so you know nobody could argue about that. But they always walk into this thing, and, and you know even with the likes of um, you know the um, 
but they say Anfield forever stones, you know, outside 96 Avenue, you know, they got a lot of stick for commercialisation. Not my bag, mate. I, I don't want my stone on the floor. To have people walking around on my day, it's so for me. Um, and the same with the, the Champions World, you know, I, I, I don't need to give someone £45 right. pounds to be part of the Champions. I'll do it every week. You know what I mean? But then there are people who will give them 45 pounds of that. So, they, you know, they, they're making that bit more out of it. So the shop isn't just selling stuff inside the shop that you can take home for you. The shop yeah. is selling stuff that you can put on the wall on the outside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that's crafty, isn't it? That's good business. You know, they're, they're, they, if anything, they are smart businessmen. FSC. Yeah, but they, they, you know, imagine it, you know, they, if you go and buy like Weetabix or something like that, and, and you can buy Weetabix, you know, um, <laughs> with no packaging and what have you, and, and it's one price, and then you go and buy Weetabix that comes in a box that you can keep forever. Um, well, you go and buy the box that you can keep forever once, don't you? And then every other time you go back, you go and buy the, 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 the stuff that's not in a box. Right. Well, that they're doing something like that, aren't they? Where they're saying, yeah, well, we can put your name in it, the champions, and it'll be up to, for 12 months, you know what I mean? And if you win it again next year, they'll take all them pitches down. If you want to stay up, then you get it at a cheaper rate, leave that picture up, and you get it at a cheaper rate. Well, to me, that's crafty because they're not asking any more for my season ticket then. Right. <laughs> so, you know, they've had to work for everything that they've got and they've done really well at it on all levels. Look at this, you know, Andy Robertson, £8 million pound for a football. Okay. Would he get in the world 11? I think yeah. he would. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, I think he would. £8 million pound he paid for him. <laughs> That's one short of robbery, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, even the, even his backup that we just bought for £11 million, he's going to be a player as well. Yeah, yeah. Don't tell James Milner that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, James doesn't want to play left back anymore, so he's well, okay. Well, yeah, but he gave, he gave him a bollocksing yesterday, didn't he? That's so that, that's meant. good. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was getting at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah because he wouldn't uh, give him a back, give him the ball back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But honestly, these are, these are great, great times in, <laughs> for a Liverpool supporter just on being, you know, in such awful times. It's, uh, you know, um, and. As Alanis Morissette said, isn't it ironic? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's strange, isn't it? Strange times we live in. Yeah. But it's a great time for Liverpool Football Club and long may it continue. He, he, Klopp has said that he'll be here till 2024, hasn't he? So, you know, if that's as much as that we get out of him, then this is a great era, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, Peter. I know that we our time is coming up to the end, but I wanted to ask you one last question. Do you have a special banner plan for the the first game of the season? Yeah, it's this one that I'm looking at on the yeah. floor. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's uh, 19 stars, a row of 10, and a row of nine underneath, uh, and in between the stars is written the word Liverpool Champions. Nice. Um, it's got the date of every league championship we've won on each star and um, they're going to be a there are five centimeter border on the start of silver with the uh, dates written in gold in the middle and so some of the star will still be red nice. um, and uh, i've also got a, a, a league trophy a premier league trophy that's going to have a double-sided picture of clock in the middle of it, surrounded by, and that's it again. It's two sided. I've got this thing about being two faced, um, just <laughs> just to show you know, it's that thing we were saying before about looking at the ground. Well, this fella's in the ground, you know what I mean? And they pull faces and look to the right. Like a monkey's performing again. Yeah, all I know is that I, I can't wait to watch a match and see that banner and say hey we yeah. we spoke to peter carney he told us he was making this banner yeah, yeah you yeah. know and now we get to see it i'm, yeah, I'm very yeah, excited yeah. so i yeah hey, I, I appreciate it, your time there will be an accompanying rich wristband yeah there you go available <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's a, uh, available on the, on the website, which will reflect re, uh, reflect the banner. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah so we, then, and we'll we'll link your website to our website. You know, when we uh, post this episode. So I, I, yeah, I really on. thank you for you know being here today. It's been a an honor and a and a pleasure to have you. <laughs> Oh, thanks. You know what? It, it, it's a genuine honor and privilege for me to talk to you because. You know, and I'm glad of the opportunity to gap because, you know, I'm, I'm rattling rounds with this 
I'm a sociable person and all this being stuck in the house on my own for as much as I'm getting on with banners and stuff like that, I miss the company. You know, my, my yeah. uh, I always say that, that I come up with the word soccer in the city because soccer comes from the word association. The game is called mm-hmm. association football mm-hmm. and the association is as important as the football. Yeah. Um, so thanks for the association with yourselves. Yeah. yeah. You well, we, I, I yeah. hope you, you know, keep making banners for years to come. You know. Yeah, me too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, are, are you ever going to do like a book? Yeah. You know what? I, I've actually got the memorial banners are going to be in a book oh, from nice. an exhibition that they were in twelve months ago up in Burnley, and I got a notification last week that they're going to be in this book. It was a display of protest banners from up and down. I could not just protest, all kinds of banners. It was fabulous, and it proper gave me a lift. I was a bit down on myself uh, at the time, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to put them banners in there, see where they sit in the, you know, in this uh, arena about that. And, and it was absolutely brilliant. I come away, I met me all-time banner hero Ed Hall. I met a woman called Emma who runs a group called Durham Banner Makers. They make the old traditional trade union banners. And I went to a Q&A and, and Ed Hall sat there and I got introduced by somebody who used to work at home. Oh, we've got Peter Carney sitting here. What do you think about it? And Ed Hall said, their banners are absolutely brilliant. He said, they should be seen all around this country. Mm-hmm. This is the greatest banner maker there's ever been to my mind. Um, and he's telling me that, you know, and I ended up getting my picture took. And as I walked up, he pushed me to be in the middle of the picture. What's <laughs> going on here? You know what I mean? And, and it really gave me a big lift. That showed the pictures are going to be in that banner. And I have spoken about a book of, of, of my own banners. I'm currently doing some stuff with a friend of mine called Keith Wilson. Um, he's got a play called Balls. Uh, was out in the 1990s and he's updated it's all about Roger Hunt and this and that but he's doing a website for it and, and he's uh, he's pushing my banners because we give him uh, 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 we helped him to get this play on in the, when he first come out with it so uh, as he says you know I want to repay the kindness you know so he's going to be pushing that and I've just found some slide pictures literally this time last week from 1990 and 1992 uh, and amongst them is uh, pictures of a banner that I made in 1981 for the European Cup final. Uh, it was a flag and it said on it Allée La Rouge with a live bird in the middle. Uh, I don't know what's become of the banner but to find these pictures was amazing and there's also pictures in there, the slide films, I was into photography at the time and I've done these pictures on slide. And the slide pictures from 1992 of the centenary flag that we made, that was the original idea for what became for the cloth that became the Hillsborough Memorial banner. And so when we come to make the centenary banner, we made it in the style of the tie that Shankly wore on his famous picture. On that tie with his hands out, on that tie it says the cop and a picture of a live bed. So we made the centenary banner in the manner of that. And it didn't work, you know, it, you couldn't keep it straight when it, in the end we ended up cutting it up. But I found these pictures of it. Um, so uh, I'm gonna they're gonna be on, on that website. And he's talked about doing it, uh, you know, as a book, yeah. So hopefully there'll be something happen before long, yeah. Nice. So Wacker, right? Your nickname's Wacker. <laughs> So it's, this is a special podcast because it's Darren's birthday tomorrow, his big 50th birthday. So on oh, behalf of me amazing. and all our listeners and viewers and, and the Whacker, we wish you happy birthday, Daza. Oh, cheers. Yeah, cheers. Happy cheers. birthday, Daz. <laughs> here's, yeah, nice fi- here's to another 50, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, he's right. Yeah, enjoy, mate. Ah, well. <laughs> all right. I'll speak to you soon. All right. Cheers, Peter. Thanks for coming on, mate. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Cheers, mate.